welcome back in this YouTube guitar channel. In this video, I am going to share you what I have learned and an actual usage experienced using the Zoom L8. There are four topics that I would be sharing with you and I will stay to the basic information that I have learned so far. But since there are a lot of information on each topic, I would break the topics into four videos so I can provide the information much better than condensing all of it into one video. Also, it will be nice option to select which topic you would watch again and get to the subject right in, then. The topics will be, mix, which is this video. And second will be, effects. Third will be seen, and I guess that will be a short one. Then the fourth one will be the recording. For any music artist out there, this is probably one of a good choice to have, if you were doing a solo, music recordings, or a full band. His system will work best for you. On this topic we will talk about the mixer parts and functions. One of the important settings that Manuel did not explain that I have to share with you is something I discovered myself. The Zoom Live Tracked L8 remembers and saves the settings of your last mix setup prior to powering off. I found out that once you power on the Zoom L8 that it will recall the prior mix settings. That did throw me off for a while until I figured it out. Excuse me if I got this manual bashing wrong, and if this information is there somewhere in the manual is that I really did not read it all. I am always excited to operate any device and learn from it through trial and error. So to start from a plain mixer setting you have to reset all their channel to remove the prior settings. And the way to reset it is to move the fader up and back down again. This is also for any tone, pan, and effects that need to be reset. Let's begin and break down the mixer parts and functions now. There are 8 channel on this device, and 6 of them, in general, are for mic's input, and the 2 additional inputs are more for auxiliary. These channel inputs will be received as a mono source with some special function built into channel 7 and 8 which will be covered later. The 6 channels designed for mic inputs are suitable for both XLR and 1 quarter TRS jack. While channel 7 and 8 has inputs for 1 quarter TRS, and channel 8 has an option for mini jack. The first and second channel has switch designed for plugging music instruments like bass and guitar, which the button are labeled as high Z. The 3, 4, 5 and 6 channels has their individual switches to turn these inputs to accommodate line level equipment and you can have this option by pressing the button labeled negative 26 dB. A phantom switch is also available for condenser microphones for channel 1 through 6, and the switch button is the one labeled 48 volts. Once this button is pressed, channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 will be supplied with the power for condenser microphones. But do not worry about if you have plugged in non-condenser or dynamic microphones on these channels, as long as you are using an XLR balance cable, there will be no effect on your dynamic microphones, according to what I have read so far from various audio engineering topics. Now let's move on to the gained knob. The knob labeled gained is your master volume for the selected channel and this can be turned left to right. Your settings here will be based on what type of sound source you have plugged into their channel as various source will have their own sound level. It is best practice to set your fader to zero first before setting your gain level to the appropriate volume desire. Test the volume with correct level of sound source. What I mean is if you are going to sing on a particular channel, test it with the way you would sing, so you can get the correct loudness setting. Allow a headroom on this volume so the sound would not clip. Minor adjustment can be made in the fader as needed. If a red light appears or start to flash red over the green light labeled SIG located below the gain knob, it means the volume is too loud and it will result in a distorted sound. Adjust your gain knob to lower the volume down. A red fader located in the lower right corner of Zoom Live Tracked L8 is your main master volume. 
it will increase or decrease the volume on all device plugged into the inputs. With this master fader, all volume will be controlled in an equal manner. A mute button for each channel is also available to silence the sound on selected channel. The button for this option was not labeled mute but instead a picture of speaker with diagonal line was placed instead. I guess it's more catching for the eyes to understand what it is for. These button will light up in red when activated. A knob for bass, mid, and high is available for you to customize your desired tone settings and the pan knob to balance your left and right sound output. These adjustments must be made one at a time by selecting the subject channel you want to modify by pressing the button labeled SEL or Cell. The selected channel to be adjusted will have an orange light. These process of selecting the desired channel to adjust applies also to the built-in effect of the Zoom Live Track L8. Again the SEL button must be pressed and the orange lights is on in order to make any adjustment for tone, pan or effects to the selected channel. The process to add an effect on selected channel will be covered on the next video which will be under Zoom Live Tracked L8 Effects. Now wait a minute. I did not left out the channel 7 and 8. Time to get into these channels. You see there is a special functions for these channels and one of them is it was designed for podcasting. Both channel has three pads with three set assigned sounds on it that you can also customize. When you press this pad a pre-recorded parts assigned to this pad will be played. Podcasters uses this function a lot for intros, fill in breaks to change topics and sometimes for background to keep podcasting more lively. Listen to this pad sample. Now channel 8 has a special mini input jack that you can connect to a cell phone and the call conversation is incorporated in the mixer. Great function for podcasting. So to summarize, channel 7 has input source for line level, USB, and to play three pads of recorded material. Summarizing channel 8, this also have input for line level, USB, audio for cell phone, and to play three pads of recorded material also. Wow. That is awesome. Podcaster. Did I get your attention? Here is another thing. Each USB input that can be received on channel 7 or 8 can be stereo. By the way, the USB connection is your link from other device, and also your power supply. For power plug the USB to any device such as computer or directly to an electrical outlet with the adapter provided. In case there is no power source, you can power the Zoom Live Tract L8 with 4 AA batteries. Let's talk about the outputs. There are two main output for left and right channel and four headphones outputs that you can also send to another PA system. Yes you heard it right. Four headphones. Is it that cool? Since the Live Track L8 was designed for music and podcasting, the four headphones is suitable for the host of the program while three others can have their own headphones that can be customized to what they can hear. With this, a fifth person on the cell phone call connected to channel 8 can join the discussion. For musicians, this four headphones is perfect for recording sessions, or even your stage monitor on live performance if you desire. And now, time to wrap up. I am concluding this part of the video. We have covered the mixer function of Zoom Live Track L8. You see, it is really more the same as how to operate other typical mixer with the exception of the select button and the podcasting capabilities that I will go more in detail on in other videos to come. I will see you on the next video. Can I get a like click? If you have not subscribed, click it for me. Thanks.